Hey, good morning. This is Tom Gore from VeloComp. Many of you spoke with me over email or over the phone many times, so now you have a face to the name. Today I want to show you how to set up Aeropod and get the most out of it. A quick little overview of the bike I'll be using today. Standard TT bike, under the bars Aeropod TT mount, Aeropod mounted rigidly underneath. On top here, I have a Garmin 520 already loaded with the Connect IQ app. FSA power box crank for a direct force power meter. Here we're using the Aeropod under the bars TT mount, mounted rigidly underneath of the Aero bars already. You can see there's no movement in that mount when I press. What I want to show you all is a common mistake we see is that the unit's not tight enough in the mount. If there's movement in the unit, then it's certainly going to move while you're riding. So what I like to do is give it a slight press down or up, whichever works for you to kind of keep the pitot tube pointed down. You'll feel it'll come to a stop in the mount, and then I'll cinch it down tight. And as you can see now, there's no movement in that unit. So we're going to pair the Aeropod to the speed sensor and the direct force power meter. I like to start by waking the sensors, spin your cranks a few times, and then force a scan from the Aeropod by pressing the button for four seconds. You'll see the Aeropod begins flashing green. It could flash green for up to 30 seconds, 40 seconds before it finds the direct force power meter, at which point It'll flash yellow three times before briefly going solid green. There you see it flashes yellow three times, solid green finding the speed sensor, and then the light is off. And what this calibration ride is essentially doing is zeroing out your Aeropod. It's going to zero out your wind sensor, your accelerometers, and it's basically giving the Aeropod a starting point for your bicycle. So the best way to accomplish this is to ride on a nice straight road. No turns, no sharp banks. You just want to go out and back on the same road. My Aeropod is already alternating the red and green light, so it's ready to go. Once I get out on this straight road, I'll press the button on the Aeropod to initiate the calibration as well as start a ride on my Garmin so I can view the wattage climb. Okay, so I'm out on some straight road. Press the button once on the Aeropod. I'm gonna get down on my Aero bars because you wanna ride in the position that you're gonna be testing your CDA in most. On the Garmin, you'll start seeing your wattage should be climbing from zero to 50 watts. As it does so, just keep an eye. At the 50 watt mark, the Aeropod will illuminate a solid red LED. At that point, you want to stop the bike completely and turn around. So my Garmin reached 50 watts. I came to a complete stop, turned around, and here I go. I'm going to step back for the second half. All right, my Garmin is climbing from the 50 to 70 watt mark. When it reaches that 70 watt mark, you want to continue riding until it reaches 100. So I've reached the 70 watt mark. I'm going to continue riding until it reaches 100 watts. Okay, my Garmin's reached the 100 watt mark now. And now I'm seeing a CDA of 0.231. So now I have a baseline CDA established. I can begin testing wheels, helmets, skin suits, position, whatever it is that you would like to do to fine tune your bike splits on the courses. After you've successfully completed your calibration ride, Aeropod will begin to transmit your CDA, wind speed, slope, and time advantage. Time advantage is time gain or lost over a given course due to aerodynamics. So for instance, over one mile, if your time advantage says four seconds, you can only imagine what you would shave off of a 40K or a full Ironman bike course. So for day-to-day -day riding, you don't have to calibrate your Aeropod. But just remember, for the first five minutes of every ride, Aeropod is checking and automatically correcting its calibration settings. So it's important to remember a few things. Firstly, remember that your Aeropod is to be tightened in the same manner that it was the last ride. Be sure that there's no movement within the unit within the mount. Second, it's important to note 
that the calibration checks that the Aeropod is making in the first five minutes of the ride are locked in for the remainder of the ride. So it's important to ride at a nice steady pace without sharp turns and braking and accelerating. If the conditions aren't correct at the place where you're starting your ride, then leave the Aeropod turned off until you can get to a portion of the road where it's nice and straight and you can ride properly without the sharp turns, excessive accelerations and braking. Note that during the first five minutes of the ride, your CDA values will all be locked in a fixed position until you complete the first five minutes of the ride. Then CDA, wind speed, slope, and time advantage will all go live. Of course, sometimes things don't go as planned. And if that happens with the first five minutes of your ride with the Aeropod, simply turn the Aeropod off by rapidly pressing the button five times. You'll see the LED light will go from green, yellow, to red, and then off, just like a traffic signal would. After that, just simply wake your sensors again and turn the Aeropod on. It'll detect your sensors, and you can start right back at square one with the five minute calibration check. Have fun on the road with your Aeropod and always ride safe.